सो गाइज टूडे वी कैन टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट ट्रेडर्स ऑफ ऑल टाइम Jesse Livermore when i heard his story for the first time i just could not stop thinking about this man because what he accomplished and destroyed in his life is truly the stuff of the legends just thinking about how many times he rose from the ashes like a phoenix is just truly breathtaking so without any further ado let's witness the remarkable life of Jesse Livermore Jesse Livermore was born on 26th of July 1877 in Massachusetts in a very poor family his father was a farmer and his mother was a homemaker now his father never really paid any attention to him but his mother realized from the very beginning that jesse was a gifted child because just at the age of 3 and a half years he was able to read and write and by the age of 5 he was already reading through financial newspapers now i don't know about you but at least i have not seen a lot of 5 year olds who can read financial newspapers and that too willingly but jesse's real gift was that he was extremely good with numbers particularly mental arithmetic in fact he was so good that while at school he completed 3 years worth of arithmetic in just 1 year but unfortunately at the age of 14 his father forced him to drop out of school in order to help in the farming business clearly jesse was crushed he was very disappointed he had passions he had dreams he was so talented and farming was not something that he wanted to do and his mother knew it so she secretly helped him to run away from home now she was a housewife she didn't have a lot of money but she was able to gather about 5 dollars which is about 8000 rupees in today's money and she arranged him to go to a place in the city where he can find a job so she told him very clearly that jesse this is the place that you have to go otherwise you will get lost in this big city right but instead of going to that address young jesse livermore persuaded the driver to stop at a place where he really wanted to work and it was this company right here called pain weber and company which was a stock broking firm and this is where jesse livermore got his first job as a chalk boy now what does a chalk boy do well at that time of course there were no computers or electronics right so these chalk boys were basically kids right who used to write down the stock prices every 10 to 15 minutes on a chalkboard for everyone to see now this may seem like a very boring job for you and me but it was actually an ideal job for him because he used to love numbers and because of his love with numbers he developed a fascination with the stock market in fact he became so fascinated with the way the prices used to move that he started to keep a little notebook and at the end of the day he used to go back home tired but he would take time to write down all the prices that he had written on the chalkboard that day all from his memory and after writing those numbers down he used to observe the patterns in which the prices had moved and when he looked at these numbers he realized that these numbers were not random so he began observing these numbers he began studying these numbers and he developed a system to predict the price movements based on the historical price now for some of you this might be sounding familiar because what jesse livermore was basically doing is what we call today as technical analysis right but up until that point young jesse had never traded a single day in his life because of course he didn't have any money right but it was about time because while working as a chalk boy he got introduced to bucket shops now bucket shops are basically these betting shops where you can place bets on a particular stock based on whether you think it's going to go up or go down without actually needing to put a lot of money so jesse decided that this will be a good opportunity to test out his system so during the lunch hours he used to sneak out of his office to go to these bucket shops and test his system and the first profit that he ever made was just about 3 dollars but he was so excited he was so pumped that he started putting more and more efforts towards this and very soon he was making more money from these bucket shops than he was making in his main job right so he decided to quit his job and focus on trading full time and within one year jesse had made 1000 dollars trading at the bucket shops which is roughly equivalent to 20 lakh rupees in today's money now jesse clearly had a system which was working for him but for the bucket shops he now seemed like a threat because they started to feel that this guy either has some kind of a magical edge or maybe he has some insider information but whatever is the case he is basically coming to our shops and robbing us in broad daylight so one by one these bucket shops started to ban jesse from even entering their shops now of course jesse had to get creative so what he started doing was 
wearing disguises right so he uh, he used to wear different types of clothes or hats or maybe even a beard but the thing is that when you are so good and you are so successful it is not very hard for people to notice who you really are so eventually what happened was that jesse livermore was banned from every bucket shop in that city so can you guys imagine this he was not even 20 years old and these betting shops were so afraid of him that they had to ban him from trading i mean this goes to show how talented jesse livermore really was right so by the age of 20 livermore had accumulated his first ten thousand dollars which is about um, two crore rupees in today's standards but in spite of his success he was struggling with the same issue that most of the traders face today and that is the lack of emotional discipline because what he realized was that he had a system which was working it was working perfectly fine but most of his losses were not coming because of the system they were only coming whenever he used to deviate from that system and trade emotionally now this is something that he kept struggling with for the rest of his career but as of now he had a decision to make and the decision was about where to go right because he was clearly banned from this whole city so he had to go to a place where he can trade with the system that he had developed so he decided to move to new york to trade at the new york stock exchange now soon after arriving there jesse met his first wife and within a few weeks they actually got married now things were beginning to look like shaping up jesse was very excited he was very optimistic but luck had a nasty surprise in store for him now what happened was that young jesse had never done trading on a proper stock exchange right so he didn't completely understand the mechanics of the exchanges and how the price codes came on those exchanges so all it took was one bad trade where he could not figure out the price codes in time and that one bad trade wiped out his entire capital and this financial shock put such an immense burden on jesse and on his marriage that his wife decided to leave him so as luck would have it jesse had no money and no wife anyway jesse was a fighter he did not allow luck to take away what he really deserved right so he shook off all those negative feelings and started introspecting okay what is that which went wrong right what is that i could have done better and he quickly realized that at this point he was not ready for real stock exchanges because there was a lot to be learned and a lot to be changed in his system in order to trade successfully on the stock exchanges but first he needed some money right because he was almost broke so where do you think he went to make money well you guessed it the bucket shops but of course he could not go back to his old city because he was banned there remember so this time he went to a different city called st louis which was a smaller city because nobody knew him there so he could operate there without worrying about somebody finding it out so his system was working he started making money and for quite some time it worked very well for him but then again slowly slowly people started recognizing him and again those bucket shops started to ban him but this time jesse used another clever trick right so this time what he did was he hired some people and trained them and used to send them to these bucket shops to trade on his behalf and this trick worked this time and within no time jesse was back in business so once he made enough money he decided to come back to new york and this time he wanted to win big and very quickly he started to make a name for himself in the trading circle because of his impeccable trading skills for example he took one very interesting trade that nobody could explain even till this date so one day what happened he was looking at the chart of a railway company called union pacific and suddenly looking at the chart he felt a psychic urge to take a short position now he could not explain why but he saw something in the charts that spoke to him and he felt like the stock of this company was going down now of course his friends and colleagues thought he was going crazy right because that stock had never fallen before but jesse was just jesse right so he went with his conviction he just went with the short position anyway and just within a few days there was an earthquake in san francisco that caused the stock of the company to go down substantially and of course jesse made a lot of money now people say that you know he must have had some insider information but just think about it for a second right? is it possible for anybody to predict an earthquake that much in advance and on top of that we are talking 100 years ago where we didn't even have that kind of a technology right so so clearly this guy had the trading genius that goes beyond the realm of our understanding anyway the trade that made him famous was during the panic of 1907 because by analyzing the price action of important financial stocks jesse got the sense that something big was about to happen and he took a huge short position in the market and his hunch turned out to be true 
and after the financial crisis of 1907 the whole market collapsed and jesse livermore managed to earn 1 million dollar in one day right and by the end of the crash he was worth 3 million dollars now jesse by this time was known to create huge short positions and that was putting a lot of pressure on the markets so some influential people in united states uh, and one of them was jp morgan they requested him to stop creating short positions and in fact they encouraged him to buy the stocks at a cheap level now of course jesse respected jp morgan but at the same time he had already made a lot of money from these short positions and he also realized that the market was trading at a very cheap valuation right so what he did was he closed all his short positions and started taking long positions on the market and because of that the market started to recover and then from that point onwards the market recovered and that made jesse lever more a lot more money now because of all this uh, livermore was branded as a hero and of course he made a lot of money right but with a lot of success at such a young age and being a bachelor also comes the urge to live a lavish lifestyle so jesse livermore started buying expensive yacht rail car uh, an expensive apartment and he joined a lot of exclusive clubs so in order to keep up with his expensive lifestyle he had to come back to trading but jesse livermore's life was full of tragic twists and turns so in trading he always believed that a trader should always use his own judgment and never trade based on tips or advice of somebody else but in 1908 he broke this cardinal rule of trading and paid a very heavy price for it so what happened was there was a influential cotton trader named teddy price who convinced livermore that he had some insider information that the cotton prices were about to go up big time now livermore of course was a little hesitant at first but because of the reputation of this person he got a little carried away uh, but what he did not know was teddy price was actually manipulating livermore so while livermore was pumping money to buy cotton price was actually selling his stake in the cotton he wanted to basically get out of the market and as eventually things happened cotton prices fell down and that caused livermore to take a substantial loss and just in this one trade itself he lost 90% of his capital and this incident shook him to the core he lost most of his money and in the following years his losses grew deeper and deeper until finally he ended up with a debt of 1 million dollars and had to declare bankruptcy in 1915 now remember this was the second time that he had gone bankrupt right so he was devastated but as we all know that he was still a fighter right he wanted to make a comeback again but without any capital left to trade he had to ask for some help now some of the brokers who trusted him they gave him a credit of 500 shares to start trading with and livermore of course knew that this was his last chance right he had to play this one perfectly so he spent the next 6 week just focusing on the price action just focusing on the tape reading he went over his notes he went over his trading plan before he finally started trading again now the result of this trade was extremely successful and slowly he built enough capital to be able to trade properly again and this time livermore meant business he traded with discipline he traded with concentration and without the influence of anybody else and over the next couple of years livermore managed to earn his fortune back and pay off his debt in fact his comeback was so shocking and spectacular every newspaper of 1917 published a story of how Jesse Livermore rose back from the ashes just like a phoenix. So Livermore's popularity was again growing back again. People bought and sold shares based on his recommendations, right? And in 1922, Jesse Livermore took part in a series of interviews which later were converted to one of the most highly read trading books of all times, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, right? And if you have not read it, I will strongly recommend you to read it. Anyway, after this, Livermore decided to move to a new office which was a bigger one where he had more facilities. and he went a little bit far away from wall street so that he can focus on his own analysis rather than getting influenced by influential traders but the trade that made jesse livermore the legend was yet to come because by 1929 livermore began noticing some strange patterns occurring in the market which were very similar to what he had observed building up to the crash of 1907 and livermore felt that something was moving in the market there was something suspicious about the patterns that indicated that smart money was exiting the market so he decided to spend all of his time in the office itself he was not going home day in and day out he used to just sit in the office study these patterns and then started placing the trades by himself leading up to october 29th and on this day the world saw one of the biggest stock market crashes that led to an economic situation that we know today as the great depression now as the news began to spread about traders that who had lost everything on black tuesday 
Liverwood's wife uh, Dorothy and her mother at home began to panic because they uh, they knew how Livermore was and how susceptible he was uh, to his extreme positions so they were crying non-stop because they they knew that Livermore would have gone bankrupt on that day but when Jesse Livermore returned back home he was actually smiling because what people did not know that he had taken a massive short position just before the crash that made him 100 million dollars which is about 1.4 billion dollars in today's money but again luck seemed to have some personal vengeance against jesse livermore because things started to get worse in his personal life uh, his infidelity his wife's drinking habit they put a lot of pressure on their relationship and eventually they got divorced and uh, this caused livermore to lose focus from trading and he started to lose his fortune rapidly and eventually he lost all his capital and he had to declare bankruptcy for the third time now as we know that he was a fighter he wanted to come back but all that pressure and all that emotional strain that he had go through over the years had worn him out and it was too much for him to take and he wasn't able to do it right so on 28th of november 1940 he buckled under all that pressure and shot himself in this hotel in Manhattan and he was of 63 years of age at that time and it's very tragic because if you read this death note that he had written for his wife and it shows the kind of pressure the kind of strain that he was into and I think with age he just didn't have what it took for him to recover back so guys that was a fascinating story of the stock market legend Jesse Livermore now you know we can all sit back and critique his life that you know he could have done this better he could have avoided this mistake but nobody and i mean absolutely nobody can take away from him the fact that he was an extraordinary trader and there are many things that we can learn from his life and in fact we will make a separate video about that but i hope that through this video you were able to see the life of the most influential trader of all time